Welcome back to Friday Night Hockey on a Monday. Mooseheads up 4-2 on the Moncton Wildcats. John Paris Jr., a true trailblazer in the game of hockey. The first man, black man, to be a professional head coach in hockey. John, but first, I need your thoughts on this game right now. You're watching the Moose and the Wildcats. What do you see him? Well, I've seen an excellent hockey game. Moose hits our better hockey team, a little quicker, a little smarter in certain areas. Uh, the difference is at this level, there's the time and space closing it. I think if the Moose hits step up that part of their game, uh, add a little more contact into it, but especially take away more time and space quicker, they'll beat the Ramparts. I'll tell you what, my friend, the movement is on. Paris to Toronto to get you into the Hockey Hall of Fame. It started with Hockey Nova Scotia. It's moving forward to recognize your accomplishments in the game. What does it mean to you to have this type of support coming from Nova Scotia? Well, first of all, it's humbling. Something I never would have expected, and I'm very surprised and happy, so thank you. But I'd like to thank Hockey Nova Scotia, Garrett McDonald, that all of the staff members of the Mooseheads, the Moosehead hockey team, the players, the uh, province of Nova Scotia and the fans of hockey all over Canada. Thank you very much. My, my friend, it, it, it's been a, a journey for you, not just on the ice, but behind the bench. A lot of it started in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. What are some of your memories of breaking in being the first black head coach in the queue? The first memory I can tell you would be back in 1968 when the director of sports in St. Joseph de Salel, he arrived to me and he said he was looking for a coach. And I said, they don't have any black coaches in hockey. And he said, I'm not looking for a black coach. I'm looking for a coach. I said, well, you just found one. As for junior major hockey, Gilles Cordeau, who I've known for uh, since he was very young, uh, he's always been an honest man. He's been good to me. And uh, I can only say good things about him. I know he's retiring soon. The province of Quebec has been good to me also. I also realized being a Maritimer and coaching as a man of color, five foot four and a half, coming from Windsor, Nova Scotia, and in a francophone league at the time, it could be challenging at times. Not because we were in the francophone league, it's because we were, I was considered a black francophone at that time. I'm a Maritimer at heart. This ring, it's the championship from the 94 Atlanta squad in the IHL. You were the head coach. What does that championship mean to you? Uh, it's probably different than a lot of people think. I, was, uh, I had another relapse with my help, and they said I would never coach again, and there was a lot of things that were in speculation. Well, I came back, went back to junior major, and ended up going back to pro. So I wear that ring. Anytime I decide I want to have a little self-pity, I look at the ring and say, hey, 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 this is not happening. When, when it comes to your battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma and becoming a professional head coach, what was it? What was a tougher battle? Hockey. Hockey? Hockey. Yes. What, what made that the tougher battle? Well, the tougher battle is because there's expectations that are there. Not only do you have to deal with your health, but you also have to deal with uh, events. You're a pioneer. You're the first one there. I didn't really realize what it meant to be a pioneer. I was just a coach. Coach by choice, black by nature. I've been saying that for 60 years. However, when you're coaching as a person, anyone that's different, there's always a challenge there. The expectations are high. And I knew that if I was not successful like in the pro ranks, it would be difficult for the next one. And one of the owners told me that. So, In your time in Atlanta, you became friends with the great Hank Aaron. Yes, I did. What was some of the advice and what, what's some of the things that he talked to you about being a trailblazer? Hank Aaron told me you have to learn. Hank Aaron said, learn. The only expectation you should have is getting the most out of your players by helping them be better players by teaching them as students. And not to take anything for granted and to go out and earn it, but you earn it with preparing yourself. That's what I mean. I just don't mean hard work. I mean educate yourself. Make sure you know the players. Identify them individually before you form an equip. Once you have that identity, you're okay. Uh, on Saturday night at the, uh, in Dartmouth, the Black Ice Society had Halifax versus Dartmouth uh, in a, a great display of hockey and also a great display of the Nova Scotia Black Youth Hockey, hockey Ice Initiative. What were your impressions of that night and seeing the game in such good hands? The first impression was the way that it was handled. It was handled very professionally. Second impression was the number of people that attended it. Third impression was I got my butt kicked. Well, <laughs> I, I'll tell you this. Your brother Percy had, had all the ringers. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we, we were playing for fun, and uh, 
that was all it was. We, we weren't really out there challenging each other. It was fun. I had a great time, and uh, I was happy for him. You know, I was very happy for him. Well, it was a fantastic event. John, I'd love to take more, but we got we got to wrap it up. Maybe we'll, we'll get a chance to talk down the line. Again, John, Paris to Toronto. We got to get this man into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. All right, stick with us. Third period coming up next right here on East Lake. Moose up 4-2 on Moncton.